Hey guys, so we're gonna do our best to take a look at some of the mechanics that are coming with the Evil Boo and the Beerus, because these are gonna be the two 1% sparking characters on the LF God Goku banner and the LF Ultimate Gohan banner. Let me actually get rid of these uh, closed captions here. All right, so we'll start with Evil Boo and then we'll move on to Beerus. I'm also, I'm also gonna quickly talk about the um, Platinum equipment at the end of the video as well, because I figured I'd throw that in here. Um, but. Majin Buu Pure Evil, this is actually, I think, a good pick because we don't actually have a sparking version of this character in the game, so uh, not no issues with this guy at all. Uh, he is a defense type. Regen, absorption, powerful opponent. Z ability is, this is a six star Z ability. 30% for regen, Majin Buu Saga, or powerful opponent, strike and blast defense. And then 15% to Buu Saga, strike attack. Okay, so it looks like he might be more of a defensive unit, which, I mean... As a 1% sparking, I'm a little nervous already. We'll see. Okay, his unique abilities. Again, I uh, just want to reiterate, we're not going to see the full kits here, so I'm going to be doing a more extensive breakdown for these 1% sparking characters in my video tomorrow. Falling effects occur every time when faced with an enemy. Restores own health by 5% and key by 30. Okay, so he's healing whenever he's facing an enemy. It's good. Minus one card draw speed to... Uh, current enemy it says enemy instead of enemies for 10 counts. Again, I say this every single time we get a character that has an effect like this. When you have a debuff like this, this needs to be all enemies to be max effective. It's not going to be that great against one enemy because if the opponent just switches, then it doesn't matter. Like it, 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 it does nothing. So, uh, falling effects occur every time when hit with an enemy strike, blast, or special move arts attack while this character is in the battlefield. Reduces enemy key by 30, activates once, and then it's going to reset when he leaves and comes back. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus 5 to all arts costs for 5 counts. Okay, so he has kind of like a stacking cost increase, which could be annoying. I mean, I think um, I think it's uh, Zenkai Saiyan Saga Blue Goku actually has an effect similar to that, and it's pretty annoying. Let me just quickly check this. Let's go Zenkai. I remember seeing this. Let me just type cost. Uh, inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus five. Yeah, this is actually the exact same thing. Every time the enemy uses an arts card. What is what is the wording here? Every time uh, it, it, when hit. Okay, so there's a bit of a... Di Goku's is obviously a little better. It's not like it's miles better. Um, but Goku doesn't need to get hit by these. As long as the enemy uses them, he inflicts the debuff. But I've actually noticed this to get pretty annoying. So this is, a, I think, a pretty pretty underrated disrupt mechanic on this boot. We'll see how well it does. So there are some of his uh, defensive abilities there. Let's move on to the next slide here. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. All right, come on. All right, unique abilities. The following effects occur when enemy activates an ultimate awakened arts or rising rush while this character is in the battlefield. Shortens allies sub count by five. Inflicts enemy with minus 30% to ultimate and awakened arts power. And then cancels enemies attribute upgrades and buff effects. Okay, so he actually is doing, you know, like the, I guess I'll just call it the blue 17 mechanic where uh, if you're fighting against, <laughs> we're getting so many of these characters now just because of Super Vegito existing. If you're fighting against like fusing Super Vegito or Ultra Vegito Blue or Ultra Gogeta Blue who have endurance nullification when they rush, uh, you will be able to negate that endurance nullification with this mechanic. So um, the only thing I will note here is uh, if this boo was instead of being a 1% sparking, if he was like an LF or something, they would have for sure added blue cards to this list. Um, but they didn't do that. So, yeah, uh, this is just a strong, a strong ability, though, for sure. Strong ability. Definitely. Uh, all right. Oh, we skipped one. Falling effects occur when this character enters the battlefield, randomly destroys one enemy card, and then randomly destroys one enemy card, activates two times. So he's destroying two enemy cards, and then that activates twice. And then every subsequent time, he's only going to be destroying one card. Okay, I mean, it's... I would have just preferred if they kept it being two cards every time. I don't know why we need to limit that, but... Uh, you know, I'm just saying, Future Gohan, uh, character that released in, like, 2020... <laughs> Or whatever it was, 2021, 20, beginning of 2021, like he, you know, killed two cards. Knocks enemy back to long range of a cover change is performed against their blast arts attack. Comboable with blue card. Okay, so this is good. Cover changes against blasts are much, 
much needed right now. They are certainly in in demand over, I would say, strikes for now. Falling effects occur if own remaining health is 50% or below when hit by an enemy's art attack while this character is on the battlefield. Okay, so this is this is going to occur mid combo. Um, like the part one fusing Goku and Vegeta, like their disrupt mechanics essentially. Restores health by 30%. Type neutral defensively for 20 counts. Reduce key by 70. And then reduces Dragon Balls by one. That's a big one. Reducing Dragon Balls by one is really strong. Um, yeah, this this is a this is a, a nice disrupt. This is a bet this is just a better version of the fusing Gogeta's disrupt, actually. Type neutrality, healing, and Dragon Ball destruction on top of the 70 key reduction. That's strong. This is a, I, I like this actually. This is a very strong uh, disrupt here. This is good. Plus, remember, he's destroying two cards when he enters anyway. So, okay. Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. For a 1% sparking, I'll take this. Uh, the ultimate deals massive impact damage, 50% to ultimate damage for three counts upon activation. And then on hit, oh, it's actually an AoE, okay. A portion of the damage inflicted will also be dealt to enemy members on standby. Destroys all of your enemy's cards. Reduces enemy's Dragon Balls by two. Wow. And then seals enemy's Rising Rush for 15 counts. Killing two Dragon Balls, that is not bad at all. If you guys have realized, I mean, obviously this is not going to be super great against um, like Super Vegito, for example, because a lot of the times he's immune to having his Dragon Balls destroyed, but I'm sure a lot of you guys have realized that if you're sitting on a Rising Rush and you have the ability to use the Rising Rush, you have all seven Dragon Balls. All, like, obviously your cards in your hand are not going to have Dragon Balls on them. At that point, if you have your Dragon Balls destroyed, a lot of the times it does take a long time to get those two Dragon Balls back because you're starting with a hand that has no Dragon Balls in it. And then it could take a while to draw cards that have Dragon Balls on them from that point. So I think that is a pretty strong ability just to destroy two Dragon Balls like this. That's that's not bad. Plus, it's obviously just a part of the ultimate effect. All right, next. Also inflicts all enemies with two sub counts. If there are two Majin Buu Saga battle members other than this character in the party. Okay, so he wants to be ran on a full Buu Saga team. He's actually technically locking in for two counts. That's like uh, God of Destruction Topo's ability, essentially. It's, uh, I don't know how good that is on like a def defense type character. Because typically that would be really good if you were like a character that could dish out tons of damage in like very short periods of time. But on the character like this, who's more of a defensive unit, I'm not entirely sure how good that is. Uh, also applies the following effects to allies if there are two Majin Buu Saga battle members other than this character in the party. 20% damage and then 15% critical rate. Okay. Um, so he's supporting when you have a full Buu team. Sure. I'll take it. I mean, I, I don't know how often you're going to be running a full Buu Saga team, but... Uh, those are pretty good perks for running a full boo team. Can't really complain about those. Support's always nice. All right, and then the final page for this guy. There we go. Main ability, draws ultimate arts card, guilty flash, 30% health and 50 key. Uh, permanent 30% damage buff. Permanent minus five to strike and blast arts cost reduction. And then... Oh, he's actually nullifying endurance for 30 counts. That is Fusion Zamasu, right? Fusion Zamasu is the same thing with his main. It's pretty good. Okay, I mean, overall, he seems pretty solid. I mean, I, we're gonna have to see the rest of his kit. We're gonna have to see his uh, stats, all that stuff. But upon initial glance, he does seem pretty good. Let me just double check uh, his typing. I think it was red, but let me just see. Uh, no, it's green, 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 green. Green, huh? So, I mean, he has a bunch of Zankai buffers, right? Well, at least one that I can think of right away, which is the Fat Boo. Let me just see. Uh, green. Who's Zankai buffing him? Let me see. Actually, not many, huh? <laughs> just Fat Boo? Is it, is it just Fat Boo? Actually, who's Zankai buffing him? Are there any green powerful opponents, Zankai? No, there isn't. Wow. Yeah, maybe it's just Fapu. Never mind. I thought it would be more than that, unless I'm just forgetting something. 
This guy's movies. LOE. GT. Movies. Saiyan's Future, God Key, Movies, Rival Universe, Androids, GT, Rival Universe, uh, GT? F no, Fusion Warriors. Fusion Warriors, Universe Wraps, Sun Family, and then Fusa Saga. Yeah, that's okay. He only has one Zenkai buffer, never mind. Hmm. Okay, well, there's Evil Boo. Let's move on to Beerus. Beerus is a ranged type. God of Destruction, Twins, God Key, and Powerful Opponent. I'm actually really glad they put him on Powerful Opponent. And this is the first Beerus they mentioned who's going to be on the Movies uh, Saga. Every Beerus we've gotten up until this point has been on... Um, actually, let me just double check this because... Let me just go here. So... This Beerus and this Beerus are both from the Battle of God Saga. Are these guys from Universe Survival Saga? They might be. What is this guy from? Yeah, Universe Survival Saga, and then this guy's also from Universe Survival Saga? Yeah. So we have not gotten a movie Beerus yet. So this is the first one. 30% to tag God Key Sagas from the movies or tag Powerful Opponent, Big Strike, and Blast Defense. Um, another double defense Z ability. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, and then 15% God Key Strike and Blast Defense again? Huh. So he's actually giving God Key 45. This is only the six star Z ability, too. He's probably going to be giving like 50% to both defenses to God Key. Wow, that's okay. All right, let's move on to the next page. Uh, unique abilities applies the following effect self when battle starts 100% damage. Okay, so now we're doing 100% damage for 1% sparkings. <laughs> okay, the power creep continues. 70% uh, reduced damage received, card draw speed, and minus 5 to arts cost. Off to a good start here. Falling effects occur when this character enters the battlefield. 15% health, 20 key, 80% damage, and then 40% damage. Wow. He's already up to 220% damage. That's not super common on just like a 1% sparking here. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Uh, the green card applies the following effects to self upon activation. Uh, draws a blast arts card next. Restores key by 50. Applies the following effects to self on hit. 20% to damage inflicted for 10 counts. Increases arts card draw speed by one level for 10 counts. Cover, uh, cover null, yeah, for five counts. And this is an AOE green card, by the way. Let me... Um, Actually, see if we can play this animation. Yeah, this, that's actually it right there. It was basically from when they're fighting underground. Um, and Goku's like blasting him or whatever. This is the AoE green right here. Yeah. Okay. I <laughs> got an AoE green Beerus here. I mean, this is pretty damn good. Blast, 50 key, damage, level 2 card draw speed, and cover null. On an AoE green, can't really ask for much more than that. That's pretty damn good. Okay. Next. 15% uh, to special move and ultimate damage inflicted upon entering the battlefield activates three times. Okay, so this is this is one of those classic cases of a character where you just want to start with them on the battlefield first. Um, and then, you know, just swap them out. And then every time they come back in, they're going to be gaining more damage. Special move, 40%. That's a lot. 40%. So you're getting up to 45% special move damage from this. And then you're getting 40% here. So you're potentially getting up to 85% blue card damage on this guy when he uses a blue card. <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty dumb. Uh did we this is I assume it's a melee blue, but let me just let me just see. They show the animation here. I believe it is a melee blue. Because I think it's the flick, right? All right? That's the green card. And then here's the blue. No, no, it's the Hakai. Yeah. I think I think the flick is the cover change. So it actually is a... Wow, it's another range blue. Because I think Evil Boo also had a range blue. So all four characters releasing tomorrow have range blue cards. I actually do like that. It's about time we got some more range blue cards. But, but, I mean, this is going to hit for a lot. 
Uh, the ultimate applies the following effects to self spawn activation. 40% ultimate damage. Okay, so you can also get 85% ultimate damage. And then it does nullify endurance. And it's an AoE. Wow. This is probably the ultimate uh, animation here. Let's just see it. Yeah, it's the uh, sphere of destruction or whatever they're going to call it. This is actually the original green beer. This is LF is what this is. So pretty cool. Uh, all right. And then the final page of uh, this Beerus's details. The following effects occur every time when hit with an enemy's arch attack while this character is in the battlefield. Restores health by 3%. That's really good. Yeah. I love these. I love these effects. When you're when you're uh, getting healed every time you're getting hit by a card. Uh, the reason why I really like those a lot is because we're now in a meta where I would say long combos are now like a thing again. Like you're, you're, you're getting comboed by the fusing Goku and Vegeta characters who are just constantly tagging out and they're constantly getting key with their with their green cards and drawing cards. And you're just taking a lot of arts cards and this is really going to help mitigate that. Let me just double check what his typing was. What was it? It was a uh, blue. So this is actually the second blue 1% sparking Beerus. So that's interesting. Uh, reduces enemy key by 70. Wow, that's a lot. Randomly destroys three cards. That's annoying. And then no switching. So you... Okay, so the first time this guy gets hit by an arts attack, he's lowering key by 70, 70, destroying three cards, and he's inflicting them with no switching. That's pretty tough to work around. That is pretty tough to work around. I like that. Knocks enemy back to long range of a cover change performed against their strike attacks. Okay, so he's a strike cover change, combable with blue cards. And then the following effects occur when changing cover. Destroys one of your own cards and draws... Oh, he has the um, Evolution Blue Vegeta, the yellow Evolution Blue Vegeta mechanic. He's going to draw a blue card when he cover changes, activates twice. So if you cover change against somebody, you can do this twice and chain it in. 20% special move damage. Wow, so he gets even more blue card damage from this. Yeah, he seems pretty strong, actually. I mean, again, we'll have to see the full kit tomorrow, but from what is on paper here for this guy, he seems like a pretty decent character. Uh, I want to quickly talk about these platinum equipments. Um, let me see. So let's let's go here. So I would say that a lot of people up until this point have been calling what are officially known as unique equipment platinum equipments, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's just the lingo for it. But now there's actually a separate thing called platinum equipment. So, you know, unique equipments and platinum equipments are now two very different things. So it's just something that I think you guys should know. Uh, so what is a platinum equipment? No random effect values and all slots will be fixed. So it sounds like they'll be pretty easy to, I mean, I, if there's even rolling involved, I mean, I guess what they could do is they could make it really expensive to roll the slots. Like if you guys know, let me actually open this. You guys know what I'm talking about. Go to items here. Um, so these equipment, the uh, legends ranking equips. You can't normally roll these equipment. You have to use a special currency to roll the slots on this. So I don't think they're going to make you get specific currency items to roll these uh, uh, platinum equipments. But um, I'm just saying that that is the thing that exists here. Uh, you can technically spend like what is like 50 slot removers per currency item to roll this one time. So they could make it expensive like that. Like maybe instead of you needing to use one slot remover, it takes 10 to roll this. I don't know. But the good thing is they're going to be um, fixed. So you don't have to you know, worry about the rolls being low or high. Or it's just it is what it is. So uh, each slot will be very powerful. I mean, that's very subjective. Uh, they, they've talked about, uh, you know, like uh, purple UI Goku's equipment being powerful when in reality it's kind of just terrible. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, now, here's the main issue here that I have with Platinum Equipments. When it's equipped on a character at Limit Break 7 or higher, additional effects will be unleashed. This is a very old school, I guess, mindset from this game. As you guys know, uh, it takes 7 stars on a character for them to be eligible to be Zenkai Awakened. If you have, for example, let's just say uh, Saiyan Saga... Goku from the Raditz fight at six stars, 
even though that character has a Zenkai Awakening, you actually cannot Zenkai Awaken him until you get the character to seven stars. So they're kind of locking the mechanic behind the character being at a certain number of stars, which I personally think doesn't need to exist. I think it was fine as it was when the mechanic first released. Like, sure, they want to, you know, find a way to... I don't know, artificially pump up their revenue numbers by forcing people to summon for characters that they don't have at a certain star level, and then they lock the Zenkai behind that star level. I guess whatever, sure. Uh, but at this point, six years in, I don't think we need that anymore. And so to introduce this on a new mechanic, this Platinum Equipment mechanic, this is just, I, I, I hate this. I, I legitimately think this is terrible. <laughs> to limit this behind, I mean... They're not technically disallowing you from equipping a Platinum Equipment on a character if they're not 7 stars or higher, but I guarantee you the good mechanics will be locked behind 7 stars or higher, which is just trash. That sucks. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this as somebody who is has every character in the game at 14 stars, so it's not going to affect me, but this sucks. I mean, I, I don't even... Why, why, why should this be in the game? Name one reason. Go. Boom. You can't. <laughs> it shouldn't be in the game. Uh, this equipment will be for specific characters. So I'm actually kind of curious how they're going to do this. I feel like this... Um, I wonder if they're going to replace unique equipment for specific characters. Like, for like, like I don't know, the Super Saiyan 3 Goku equipment is specifically for this ID number character. Purple Super Saiyan 3 Goku. I wonder if moving forward... They're just going to have these be platinum equipment instead of unique equipment. Or for LF characters, right? We just got the uh, the Vegito Blue equipment. I wonder if they're going to do for LF Like, this could just be a platinum equipment now. I don't know if they're comfortable doing that because they obviously... I mean, this is not cheap to roll when you want to get the best roll in slot 3. Remember, Platinum Equipments have fixed values in all three slots. All you got to do is roll it once and you know you're getting the best possible roll. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what they're going to do here, but it definitely feels like that's at least on the table. And in terms of how to get them, get the corresponding character, then get the equipment from Mission Rewards. So it doesn't even sound like you need to spend energy or whatever just like farming the equipment from like the, the equipment collection stage. Uh, you're going to get them from missions. But, I mean, the missions could be pretty annoying. I mean, they could be annoying with this, I guess. Like, run a stage 500 times, I guess, could be like a mission or something. I don't know. Uh, but they did also mention that Omega Shenron, the Ultra Omega Shenron, uh, he's getting a Platinum Equipment as the first one. Um, so we'll see. I don't really think... Again, I would just treat these as unique equipment that we have right now. We'll see what this looks like when this actually gets added to the game, but we'll see. Um, although I do think this could have some implications for part three in terms of just the theme, you know, Omega. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that's going to do it for this breakdown. We covered Beerus and we covered Evil Boo and we talked a little bit about the uh, Platinum equipment coming to the game as well. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.